Hello. Welcome home. Welcome home to First Christian Church of Decatur. I'm James Brewer Calvert. My pronouns are he, his, and him, and it's a delight to be with you tonight. Welcome home. This is our 601 Thursday, and we are at First Christian Church of Decatur. We are and we are anti-racist and pro-reconciling. It's a joy to be with you tonight. I want to offer you with some words in Aromo, which is the um, Aromo, which is the uh, Ethiopian dialect, uh, and it's uh, the welcome words are Atam, Utam, Baga Nagana Dufte. I learned that from Pastor Alamo, who is the pastor of an Ethiopian. Uh, evangelical church here in Atlanta. We hosted a wedding of an Ethiopian American couple and Pastor Alamo and I did the wedding together. He did about 95% of it and it was all in Ar Aromo, but I got to do the greetings and it was a joy. And later that evening as people were leaving the reception, one of the young men went out of his way to find me and he said, we felt truly welcome here. We felt truly welcome at First Christian Church of Decatur. And that's that's what we wanna that's what we really want to do. That's who we are. We want to embody the hospitality and the grace of God. We want people to feel that they are at home, that they are welcome, that they are loved just as they are when they're at First Christian Church. Whether it's for a Saturday night wedding or for a Sunday morning service or for a lifetime of community and civic and church involvement. So tonight, I'm going to offer a, um, a trigger warning, okay? So this is a trigger warning that I'm gonna be talking about a very difficult subject, and the subject is the misuse of the Bible. The misuse and abuse and use of the Bible to harm and to hurt. And if this disturbs you, then you know now um, to check out or come back another time. But I'm going to be looking at what we call the so-called clobber texts. Clobber texts. These are texts that are used that people pick and choose. Um, cherry picking is a fun term from the Bible to use to ostracize, to hurt, to oppress, to subjugate other peoples. And it's wrong. So. Um, we're going to be doing that. I'm going to preach a sermon on this on Sunday. So tonight is kind of a preview, kind of a let you know what's coming up on Sunday morning. I want you to be prepared that on Sunday, September 18th, I'm going to be preaching on, I'm going to be preaching, I'm going to get this off the screen. Okay, there we go. I'll be preaching on um, these scriptures and how though God's love is big and huge and always present, Sometimes people choose to subjugate or oppress other people and use the Bible for their um, own benefit. Okay, here we go. Let's go. Let's start. So at a past General Assembly of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ at the LGBTQ plus Alliance booth for what was then called um, GLAD, which was Gay and Lesbian Affirming Disciples, two parents and their teenage daughter approached the booth. The adults asked some questions and were given some answers about the mission of GLAD. And then the parents said, um, you know, um, they could not imagine anyone in their church family having any interest in anything that GLAD had to say. That they had no, they could not imagine anyone in their congregation having any interest or um, need for learning about the lesbian and gay and um, transgender and bisexual community. And so they turned and walked away. But the teenage daughter turned back towards the GLAD booth and said to the people there, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence and thank you for your mission. We need you. So prepare to be prepared how to respond to biblical challenges about who and whom you choose to love. Consider the following scriptures that have been misused over the centuries. How about this one? You'll find this one in Ephesians and in Colossians. 
Slaves, obey your masters. How about that? Slaves, obey your masters. It's been used to justify the subjugation Women should be silent in church. Women should be silent in the churches. That's in 1 Corinthians. It's been used to subjugate and oppress women and girls for centuries. That's a good one. Here's another good one. Um, this is found in Genesis 9. Noah's curse of Ham. And he said, Canaan shall serve his brothers. And that's been used to justify institutional and systemic racism against people of color. The story in Genesis' original purpose may have been to justify the subjugation of the Canaanite people to the Israelites, but in later centuries, that narrative was interpreted by some Christians and Muslims and Jews as an explanation for black skin, as well as a, sub, as a justification for slavery. Nevertheless, most Christians and Muslims and Jews now disagree with such an interpretation of that scripture. Because in a biblical text, as you know, Ham himself is not cursed, nor is his race or skin color and privileges. This Bible has been used to clobber people, and that is wrong. Pure D wrong. Today and on Sunday, in sacred and safe space, we dare to speak of the use and misuse and abuse of the Bible to hurt and to harm. The Bible has been used like a weapon, and it is not intended to be used as such. The Bible points us towards God. It does not point us toward hate. God's word has been used to clobber people emotionally, spiritually, socially, to hurt and harm the innocent. And the faith experiences of our forefathers and foremothers have been misrepresented, misinterpreted, and misunderstood, all in vain attempts to control or dominate or exclude neighbors known and unknown, and even family members. Tonight I'm going to give you a couple examples, but I'm going to go into more examples on Sunday. How about this one from Leviticus 18, verse 22. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20, verse 13. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall be put to death. Their blood is upon them. It's in the Bible. But you know what these verses really refer to? They refer to treating another human being as property. Do you treat your spouse and your loved ones as property? I know I don't. I treat my partner with love and respect, and she treats me the same. I'm a Christian, and I've been freed from the demands of the Old Testament. From the Old Testament law, from the Old Testament ways. As a Christian, I'm freed from having to follow every law in Leviticus. And I'm gonna tell you what, the folks who use this text to hurt or harm or clobber homosexuals, right, are cherry picking because you know they don't follow all the laws of Leviticus. They're only picking out these two and all the rest they're ignoring. So give me a break. On Sunday morning, in the context of worship, we're going to explore biblical passages from Genesis and Romans 1 and 1 Corinthians, Romans and 1 Corinthians and 1 Timothy. One of my favorite quotes is by a biblical scholar and Christian, David Weiss, who said, Many a time we try to narrow God down to those whom we are comfortable loving. 
That's a good one, right? We try to lower God, try to narrow God down to those whom we are comfortable loving. Sometimes in the narrowing down of God, folks use the Bible to justify their racism, to justify their sexism to justify their homophobia, to justify their xenophobia, their fear of others, their fear of the alien in our midst. And we see an incredible example of that fear um, this week as innocent people are being used as political pawns when they're shipped from by plane or bus from Texas and Florida so-called Christians, and maybe they're getting their justification from the Bible. I don't know, but whatever they're doing, it's pure D wrong. You can't say you love God at the same time you are treating other people with hate. It doesn't work that way. You either love everybody with love, and then you can say you love God. A friend of mine told me a story about the time when he got home from a long trip and he walked in his house and his daughter ran across the room and jumped into his arms. And he was so glad they hugged each other and he happened to glance in a mirror and he saw that his daughter, with her head right here, was sticking out her tongue at her brother. He didn't know what to do, but his wife did. His wife said, child, take your arms away from your father's neck because you cannot love your father and stick your tongue out at your brother at the same time. Love God. Love one another. Love yourself. The Bible points us towards a God of love and grace. And we're smart enough, and we're wise enough, and we're astute enough to know when there are passages in the Bible they just need to be put aside and say, that's from another time, another era, but it doesn't work anymore. The Bible points us to God. The Bible is not God. God is God, and God loves you. And may God's grace be with you. I hope to see you on Sunday morning at 1025, and we'll be gathering, we'll be welcomed home, and we're going to love God and love one another. Take care. Good night.